Hi everybody, this is CVGS, I'm the captain here and welcome to another tournament fight that we have for you guys here today. Uh, from last weekend, this is a fight between Rie and Wei Jie. This is Chronojet against Luke. Now Luke is actually new to the scene right now, especially since it just released in BTO8. This is the tournament that just released after the BTO8 released as well. So uh, we get to see it action right here right now. So of course there's a lot of decks that actually got a huge boost in the BTO8. But the first one that we'll be seeing right now from that set will be Luke as well, going up against a tried and true Chronojet Dragon that has been proven to be very very strong in the tournament scene as of late. So Rie, as you guys can see, has uh, ridden over Chrono Drum with Mace Gear Dragon and gets that crest plus the one draw as well. Uh, Ionella being rode over by uh, Irina. And of course, uh, the draw one from the, the starter skill. No guard on, on Rie's side, critical trigger. So uh, draw trigger on Rie's side, so not all is lost. He gets plus an additional draw from that draw trigger check. And the turn should pass over to Rie. So Rie now uh, proceeds to... Uh, go into his next turn, he's definitely going to look for a card to drop here uh, in order to ride up into Smoke Gear Dragon. Uh, and of course, the Smoke Gear Dragon uh, would benefit more from having Chrono Jet actually roll over it, but of course, that's how the right line works from there. And uh, yeah, not much I need to say here. So, dropping, ooh, that's interesting, dropping a Crimson Expeller uh, in order to ride into Smoke Gear Dragon. So, Crimson Expeller is interesting, but of course, most of the the Corajet decks that's been topping these days has been working with Brainwalk Swirler. So getting more soul charges while also in conjunction with uh, GG as well uh, would gain a lot of um, uh, would gain a lot of pluses also in terms of power. Also. So a heal trigger on Rie's side as uh, I as we have seen already. So his damage is now one to one. Uh, which he writes over uh, to Lillian and uses Arena skill when rolled over by a Pale Oni a uh, Pale Moon Oni clan. You get to look at top 7 cards, choose one among them and add it to the soul. So, oh, and Wei actually adds Rising Dragon in the soul. Very key component card in the uh, the Pale Moon deck also. Uh, uh, in this case, look here. So, very, very, very strong card and has a lot of benefits. As you'll see soon enough also, uh, that um, the Rising Dragon will play a huge part also in terms of Wei Or rather, look here's uh, uh, Arsenal, so to speak. Calling another... Uh, uh, Rising Dragon as well, Rising Dragon skill is that you can actually choose to put a card from your hand into the soul and draw one. This is exceptionally helpful to set up your soul so that you can use Lukia's ability right on the get-go. Uh, Rising Dragon will be attacking. And as we decides on the guards here, uh, guards with Brainwash Swirler, okay. Guarding with Brainwash Swirler, it's not crucial at this point in time, especially since the idea is that Brainwash Swirler can really go up against the stage. If not, if you do manage to timely pit, you can actually Pop, uh, pop it off the side, it can have a super powered side, so from all the, the power from there. Front trigger on Wei side, uh, but the guard is successful and passes the turn back to Rie, so Rie maintains damage at 1. Rie now deciding uh, which card to drop in order to bring out Chrono Jack Dragon as well. He can't strike this turn just yet, so, but he can still do something devastating uh, to Wei uh, as best as he can also, of course. Uh, using Smoke Gear skills, so Soul Blast 1. Gonna search his deck for a great tree, reveal it, add it to your hand. Uh, the choices being, of course, uh, Balin as well as Crow Jet Dragon. Uh, in the deck list, but of course, in other things as well, but most deck builds usually only go with these two as the great trees. Balin being a very, very good card also, because if you discard it for Strike, you can actually get a plus one draw as well, which is really, 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 really handy, uh, especially once you get into your Striding turns. Alright, so uh, we'll see what Rie is going to do right now. He calls out the Balif uh, to the side as well. Just gotta add some added pressure, so you know, kind of a way to counteract the fact that Rie here actually actually called the uh, the uh, what you call it, uh, the Rising Dragon to the side. Uh, call out Upstream Dragon as well. Upstream Dragon is not online because he requires GP one in order to do that. And of course, he's going after the side, uh, which is makes sense because of Rising Dragon's uh, strong capabilities. Damage taken for Balin's attack, now Chrono Jet attacks. What will Wei do? Wei will actually work out 15, so there's two triggers. Uh, all in, no second trigger, so unfortunately there's no damage, uh, additional damage that's going through right now, and the turn passes back to Wei Jie. So Wei Jie right now, getting ready to go up into Lukia. Now, being that he went second, which means that uh, Lukia's full skill can come online. Lillian's skill would be Soul Charge 1, choose a card from your hand and... and uh, choose the card from soul and put it to your hand. Alright, chooses Lillian to put into the hand. And uh, yeah. 
Uh, and then now looking at as I was mentioning earlier, her full skill is now online, which is going to be happy right now. So color swap, put a card from your hand into your soul. Then choose three cards with different grades from your soul. Call it a separate regard circles. And uh, yeah, and because uh, your opponent's grades you are higher, so they all get plus 5k. So uh, we then gotta make sure that we count it up because unfortunately the we don't have any counters here on that day, so we won't be able to. Uh, probably show the, the, the numbers here But I'll do my best to calculate it as correctly as I possibly can uh, Rising Dragon skill will pop off Which is that 3 cards are called out from the soul So if 2 or more will call out from the soul uh, This really gets plus 10k And if 4 or more cards are called out to uh, the soul uh, It gets plus additional 10k too as well And we're going to be seeing that 4 card come up Because of the order card that has been placed into the soul The other card skill is that you count plus 1 Choose one of your uh, rear guards that gets the skill When the Vega attacks, move this card into the soul Then choose a pill mode only card from your soul And call it the regard circle The combination here will be that Rising Dragon will go into the soul And then it will call itself back out as well So since it is moved into the soul So that's how you get the 4th Which means that you have uh, Rising Dragon actually uh, Hitting very hard Twice And it's not considered like the same unit being attacking twice as well So it bypasses some of the, the huge trigger shenanigans as well uh, First attack from uh, Rising Dragon goes through Alright, and then of course, so the order cards are literally going off. Rising Dragon coming back out again, and it does get plus the additional plus 5k too as well. And again, uh, using Rising Dragon's skill, you can actually put a card from your hand in your soul to draw one, and he does put in the order, which means that uh, Wei is definitely set up for the next turn. Alright. Uh, heal trigger coming in from Wei side. Heal one, and gives power to Lillian. Uh, second is Falcon Performer. That's interesting. Falcon Performer in the Lucian deck, so makes sense too. Uh, in order to put in certain cards that you want to put in, especially if you're missing the grade and all that. But of course, so uh, counting out the powers right now, I believe this Lillian. Lillian did get the plus 10k. So Lillian herself gets plus uh, 5k when she gets called to the uh, Regal Circle. Uh, and so she would be at 15, 15, 25, 35 plus 5 from Ionella. But, but there's a guard off from there, so no problem, PG. Yeah, just to double check that the PG went off for, for that. So now it's Rising Dragon that's coming in to attack. What will Rie do? Rie will take the damage. Of course, he is now at 3 right now, so definitely very easy for him to take damage. And now, uh, Wei Jian popping Lucas' other skill, which is choose 2 regards uh, and move them into the soul. And after that, it gets to draw 1 or so. That's the nice thing about the Lucas deck. So, the Lucas deck actually can build up hand quite fast. So, I experimented it with myself, and the hand size build up actually can get pretty thick. So, uh, defenses wise, or maybe even offensive wise as well. Although, at this stage right now, Wei Jian would be reliant on the soul in order to uh, pop his offense as he has Rising Dragon after all. So in this case also, all, everything in his hand is mostly towards the defense uh, part of it also, which what makes the Lukia deck quite strong at this stage uh, in time also. So we are now going into the strike phase. Uh, and of course, uh, striding with Balif as well, going into uh, Fate Rider. Fate Rider Dragon, just explain the skill, Color Blast 1 from Chronogest Strike skill, moving Lillian to the bottom of the deck, getting rid of that pesky uh, 10k shield, because Lillian also gets plus 5k shield if put on the Guardian Circle. And of course, also, Balif uh, allows it to draw 1, also, which Rie has already done too as well. So Fate Rider is the the, the big kahuna in the in the deck for Chronogest, so as we all know, Fate Rider skill is, it allows you to actually time leave one of your units, if you are not familiar with the term time leave which I'm using, Basically, it means that you choose one of your regards, you send it to the bottom of the deck, search your deck for a card with one grade higher than the card that you have sent, and then uh, call it to a regard circle. So, uh, the combination is very, very strong with this, as we're going to be seeing. Uh, Upstream Dragon going to be attacking, so Upstream Dragon gets plus 5k. So, it's 50k coming after Luke here, so it's an easy 5k guard. Alright, and then uh, uh, if it gets plus 5k, then it gets sent to the bottom of the deck and search for unit with uh, search for grade 1 unit and call it to a regard circle. Alright. Good few choices uh, that Rie has as well. As earlier mentioned, there is uh, GG as well uh, coming in to give the plus one draw and also it gets plus 5k too as well. Not only that, there's also Brave War Swirl which allows you to actually soul charge one which means you can feed more to the soul and actually you can get a lot more power for uh, Brave War Swirl. Uh, GG coming in uh, with the Soul Blast 2, draw one and it gets plus 5k because uh, you have a, a G unit. Uh... Oh no, it doesn't get plus 5k because you need a G unit fix up in the G zone. So. Alright, but Fate Rider coming in. Uh, time leaping. GG back into upstream dragon. So that's the combination right there. So you use Fate Rider Dragon to actually up uh, to actually up the unit into um, upstream. And then upstream just goes back to Great One, which turns it into a booster as well. 
And of course, so the crest is in play as well. So uh, for every face up uh, G unit in the G zone, all units in the front row gets plus 5k. So currently, right now, everything in the front row gets plus 5k. So that upstream is no longer plus uh, 5k when it attacks, but it's plus 10k in total. So no triggers on Rie's side. Uh, so one damage to to wait here. But now this upstream coming in to attack one more time. This is now 15, 20k. Uh, okay. There should be more than that. So yeah, Free Rider actually plus 5k too. So, so it's actually 25. My mistake. So it should be able to hit uh, uh, Lucian no problem as well. And uh, using upstream dragon to call out gear 0. So gear 0 would actually get plus 5k. And it can intercept for a back row if it stays there as well. So uh, yeah. So it'll be... Uh, uh, 15k, sorry, no, 30k at the back, and Balif now attacking as well. Balif on his own is 13. Uh, no additional power as well, minus the plus 5k, so 18, 18 plus 13, this should be 31, coming after Lucas 23. Okay, no damage for that, 4 damage straight to, to wait here, and it passes over, so. And just to clarify, I did double check uh, GG's skill, is that when she's placed by card ability, she gets the, the draw, so yeah. Oh, she gets a black okay, my mistake. <laughs> just that we making sure that I get the skills right, I don't want to be as correct as I possibly can as I as I commentate this match for you guys as well. It's important that I be correct, so uh, in terms of it's all my card skills as much as possible, so I am the only one over here. Uh, I don't have a second person to, to help me correct myself or so, but as we can see once again, we here now, counter blast 1, calling out Lucia's skill, 3 units come out, all then get plus 5k because of Lucia's skill, and uh, so blasting 1 for breathing dragon skill, so that all so that it gives the Vegas the skill, all units in the front row gets plus 5k, so it's no longer a, a uh, it's no longer a 15, uh, 10k with the person right, it's actually a 15k too as well. Alright, then card moves to the soul, draw 1 too as well for rising dragon. So Rising Dragon attacking one more time. I'm oh, sorry, uh, the skill that was popped off was actually the order. My mistake. So the order actually went off as well. So giving the skill to Rising Dragon. Rising Dragon will go in and come out one more time. Uh, when the Vega attacks off. Falcon Performer. Unfortunately, I don't think uh, there is a missing grade in there. Oh, wait, no, there is. Uh, wait, is there? No, no, I don't think there isn't. I don't think there isn't. So I don't think it can perform Falcon Fav uh, Performer's ability. But Rising Dragon anyway, uh, coming in and out once again. Uh, draw one, two as well. Oh, Falcon Performer can. So it actually puts in the order back into the soul. So Falcon Performer actually puts the order back in. And I think I missed Wei Chia actually drawing one uh, from the Rising Dragon. But anyways, a PG coming down. First check, nothing. Front trigger. So a front trigger, uh, everything in the front row gets plus 5k, so now everything is plus 25k. Or so. Not to mention Rising Dragon is now plus 20k on its own two as well. Combine that with the 15 as well, that's a total of plus 35k on its own. Very, very powerful, uh, strong uh, column on the Rising Dragon, and it just goes to show just how important the Rising Dragon is or so. And probably the ideal card to uh, to keep and maintain, put it back in the soul using Lukia's skill. So it is very, very precious. Well. Alright, no guard on the Lukia. Now Rising Dragon coming in will re uh, guard this. It is a very, very big number. And he is at 5 damage also, so you probably will have to PG in order to make this as easy as possible for, for him. But so Blast. And uh, yeah, sorry, no, my mistake is a PG. Coming in. And uh, Lukia's skill. Moving both Lukia as well as um, a Rising Dragon into the soul and getting that plus 1 draw. Passes the turn over to Chrono Jet Dragon right now. And Chrono Jet coming in with the stride. Dropping Corona Jet Dragon itself. Alright, getting out the Corona Dragon next stage as well. Now there is two face-up cards in the G zone, so all units in front row gets plus 10k currently right now. Uh Car Blast 1 for Corona Jet skill to actually send a Breathing Dragon to the bottom of the deck. Alright. And eventually that front row will be plus 15 or so, especially with next stage's ability being able to go back to the G zone and changing the Vega to uh Corona Jet Dragon. In which case, Chrono Jet Dragon uh, will have his GB2 active and available. So, upstream one more time. Steam Bear Dragon calling behind, uh, uh, calling behind Chrono Dragon next stage, and Chrono Dragon next stage be, uh, going after. Right now, Wait, there is at four right now. Chrono Dragon next stage should be coming in if I'm not mistaken. Thirteen plus, 
Uh, 15, 28, 28 plus. Uh, 15, nope, that's a PG, never mind, I don't need to count anymore. <laughs> First check, critical trigger. Alright. Uh, all effects to upstream. Second check, Brave War Swirler. Third check, another critical trigger. All effects to Bali Brave Swirler. Now, everything on the board is a must guard except for potentially uh, Corajet Dragon. Because of the fact that while it is only at 1 damage, as we are going to be seeing, Crow Dragon next stage skill coming on. Uh, sending the uh, Crow Dragon next stage back. And now there's plus 50k across the front row. And Crow Dragon next stage GB2 will be able to proc when he attacks. Or so, Which will deny Wittier from actually using any great ones or higher to guard his attack. But of course, as I said, also, upstream as well as uh, Balif are now must guards as well. So, so plus 15k on both ends. Uh, this will be 30k uh, coming in. No, no, 40k thanks to the trigger too as well. So it's actually 40k coming towards Luke here. And it's a rough guard. It's a must guard in a sense also. Alright, so 30k. Uh, should be able to, to uh, guard off from there. Base up to 43. Alright, and then of course, so upstream dragon's ability. Which uh, will time leap. So call in another uh, GG. But I don't believe uh, Corona Dread... Uh, has any soul, so he won't be able to benefit from the draw one. And as we take a moment to breathe right now, Chrono Dragon next stage will be attacking. And Chrono Dragon next stage, let me see if I can count that number right. So, oh, no guard instead from from which yeah. heal trigger. So heal one to uh for Rie, the four damage. Over trigger second check is a is crimson expeller, but over trigger comes out defensively and it actually stops uh, the onslaught that uh, Coral Dragon will put on to Luke Air right now. So, so we move from game plus hundred uh, plus hundred million to to Luke Air. No matter what, Balif cannot hit that number. So yeah, the turn passes over. So which has uh, you know he only has one color blast, but he does use the the Gratias. The Gratias Granat and then gets a Persona right, activates Persona right. So draw one plus take it to the entire front row. And Lucia skill one more time, moving the Raven Dragon into the Soul and calling out three cards with different grades from the Soul to Regard Circle. This is what I mean when I say that if you have your Soul set up ready for Lucia, you actually, that's your fighting force right there. Your Soul is your fighting force. Especially if you have, um, especially if you have Rising Dragon there as well. Now, unfortunately, there's not enough Counter Blast anymore, but you still can Soul Blast one. And so, uh, we have a, so plus one to add plus another 5k to the entire front row, so it's 15 in total. Thanks to Breathing Dragon. Now, he doesn't have any more color blasts yet, so he is unable to use, uh, he's unable to use, uh, uh, the order card, which he ended up so blasting out anyway because he knows. Uh, but he does use Rising Dragon skill to actually draw one as well by putting up for head and so. Luke here now attacking, so just getting all the triggers first, doing a number count. We got to check, uh, currently right now that one should be 10, 10 plus 5, uh, sorry, let me count it from, from the start, that's 16 in total on that column, uh, for Rising Dragon, then plus 15 for the Persona, right, plus the, the ability, uh, as well as his own skill, which is actually plus 10k, so, that's like 41 on that side, and looking at side, uh, should be plus 10k, plus 10k, um, plus 10k, plus, uh, sorry, plus 10k in total, so it is 31, 31, then plus the 15, so it's actually uh, 46. Big numbers on both sides right now, so and they can be augmented further by uh, Lucas ability. So plus 30k, the Vega currently coming in right now for 28, 28 plus 8, so it's actually uh, 36. So that should be for two triggers. First check, second check, critical trigger. Ooh. Uh, where we put, have we put our Rising Dragon? So Rising Dragon will definitely will benefit from a lot of power from there. And that goes up from 41 into 51. Double critical. This is lethal for Rie unless he's able to guard this off. And look at his hand size right now. He's getting a little thin. Quite thin. But he's able to put out enough guards as a 45k guard. Enough guards to actually uh, defend himself against Rising Dragon. And he just takes one from the Luke here, so... One more time, Wei moves a Luke and Rising Dragon to Soul and draw one. His hand looking pretty healthy at this stage right now. So maybe he might be able to take this after all. But it passes over to, to Chrono Dragon. Uh, Chrono, Chrono Jet Dragon. Chrono Dragon is in the, the, the G zone up there. Uh, but yeah. 20k to the front row thanks to the crest in play right now with four face up G units. Oh no, sorry. Three face up G units. My mistake. Uh, it's not uh, It's not four, it's three. 
double checking the drive check uh, that uh, that waiting ahead and discarding Brainwash Swirler and Crimson Expeller his last two cards in his hand going straight into Fate Rider Dragon uh, Color Blast 1 gonna send that Breathing Dragon to the bottom of the deck moving that uh, GG up to as well now the options is really really the option is really simple from here from from what we know of what we plays so attack with the GG first GG does gain plus 50k thanks to the crest from there so that is not an 8k that's actually a 23k so it's a 50k guard from way side currently right now so so even even a lowly grave water so can do quite a tremendous amount of damage uh to uh your opponent so thanks to the crest being in play and of course also using fate rider dragon skill as well he does have one more color blast who takes the damage no trigger unfortunately so which is stuck at 13k for defenses but color blast one for fate rider dragon as i was talking about earlier uh can time leap the gg that has just attacked and go straight back into upstream and just continue the the multiple attacks also. all right upstream dragon coming into play the ammo or the the, the modest operandi of how uh, of how uh, the Crojo Dragon deck works in uh, Old Rest is shine is really shining here. So it's something that a lot of players have seen for quite some time. So ever since the the strike deck came out. So, but in any case, right now flipping G unit fix up to as well. So 20k across the board, PG or uh, which side? So protecting himself. First check nothing. Second check nothing. Third check critical trigger. Ooh, where would that critical trigger go? So. Uh, yeah, I mean, where would it go? So you could put it on upstream and make that attack more powerful. Then when you type it, it goes in. But uh, okay, he splits up the the uh, he splits up the the ability. So I believe the critical went to um to Balif, and the power went into upstream dragon. As I was talking about earlier, you put the power onto upstream dragon. It makes it powerful. Then when he it uses its own skill to actually set the bot uh, set itself a bottom of the deck, call grade one. That Balif column is going to be much much more bigger as well. So. Oop, a little bit flick over there but right now if you're counting out the power from from upstream 20k 15 35 uh yeah that's a well that's bigger so, so yeah but anyways uh sending it to the bottom of the deck and calling out brainwash swirler now brainwash swirler soul charge one it gets plus 5k so it becomes a 30k booster from there all right two damage on to uh, on that also because of the double crit Balif attacking, counting out the numbers too as well. So Balif does get plus 10k whenever a card gets into the bottom deck, so it's actually 23. 23 plus uh plus 20 is 43. 43 plus 13 is 50 56. Can't take this unfortunately, and it is game. So well played by both players right there. So what a game guys, it goes to show that both these two encounter cards are actually going very very strong as we now see the deck list for uh for Rian right now as you can see. Playing some interesting cards with the Crimson Expeller but then again it does fit into what Brainwash Swirler actually does uh, for the build itself. Uh, very strong as we have seen many many times from Chrono Jet uh, in the tournament scene these days as well. So it's proving its strength very very well. So, but let's talk about more about the Lukia deck. So, especially since it's new on the block. So, as we flip over to the Lukia deck, and as you can tell from the Lukia deck, so the Lukia deck is actually proving itself to be very very strong and very capable of its uh, many uh, abilities uh, through use of Rising Dragon, the main combination over here. But it is built using Falcon Performance in order to actually get back cards into the soul. So, if you plan it right, you can actually get back stuff like your Rising Dragon back in, or you can get your uh you can get your your order back in as well so many different combinations in which that you can perform in order for you to be able to get the cards that you need in order to pull off lukia's ability so but that's gonna be it from us right now so thank you everybody so much for enjoying this total fight that we have for you guys and we'll see you in the next one